Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Uh, we've got Brandon Smith with us as our last player call this week. Um, and we can go ahead and get started. Just a reminder to use the raise your hand feature um, and we'll get you called on. Start with um, Joe Giuliano. Uh, hello, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Fine. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, um, obviously you guys have had a rough three weeks. Uh, what do you think uh, your confidence level is at now as you prepare for the next game against Nebraska and, 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 uh, and how, how do you feel that you're, you've uh, worked to correct your mistakes as a team? So for us, our confidence level, we're still confident in what our abilities are and what we're able to do. And we're really just looking at Indiana like, another team but we do know that okay we need some momentum going on so I mean we're fully confident in our abilities like I said and we're just looking forward to entering the game. Tyler Donahue. Good afternoon Brandon nice to speak with you. Um, yesterday coach Franklin got pretty personal in that press conference about struggling to kind of manage his responsibilities at Penn State fully without his family being up here and present for him. Is that something that's been apparent for you guys? Or, or did you kind of find out about those struggles in the last couple of days? Did Franklin open up about it to the team maybe before he opened up to, to about it in the press conference? We, we knew about it from the start. We, we, we were fully aware of it and we understand and we we're behind Coach Franklin with that because – I really couldn't see it being, how should I say it? I couldn't see anybody really being able to go from always being around their family because uh, they're very tight knit. They're, they're very close together. And just from going to that to no personal like communication as far as being in, in their presence, that's difficult. Like, it's just like for college athletes or just any college uh, kid in general, going from high school all the way being in their own underneath the parents' roof to being on a college campus, like, it's difficult and it's different. So, I mean, we're, we're all behind him with that, and we're going to make it through this the best way we possibly can. Mark Brennan. Brandon, for people who aren't really around the program, can you let us know how much James Franklin's family is a part of, of the program? I know we've always seen his, his girls at practice and, and camps and stuff, but I'm sure you have an even greater appreciation for that. I do. I always remember the times I went over to um, Coach Franklin's house and uh, Miss Fumi, his wife, and uh, his uh, daughters, Addie and Shoulder, like they're like family to me. Like they're like my little sisters that I never had. And that's like a second mom to me. So, I mean, I can really say that like, I appreciate them on a whole nother level now that I'm personally can't see them like Coach Franklin and everybody else does in person. Partha Pajay. Hey Brian, I appreciate the time this afternoon. Uh, no problem. I know obviously y'all are on different sides of the ball, but you know, just from the time you, you got to campus, uh, what have you seen in, in Juice Scruggs, you know, kind of his road to recovery and having that moment where he, you know, got back on the field on Saturday for the first time in 20 months, uh, what's that journey been like for him? For him, I've, I will constantly see him in the training room every single day, just getting treatment, getting better uh, from the time that he had the accident that he had all the way until now, and even still continuing through him playing, he's still in there trying to get better and better and better each day. And the more and more I get to know Juice, I know that like he's driven. I know he's driven to um, be great and him being on the field for the first time in a while, that's it was really special to me because I started knowing Juice a little bit before he, him and his accident. So getting to know him more and seeing his uh, road to recovery is very special. Tyler Donahue. Brandon, uh, James Franklin told us yesterday that we can probably expect to see some more of Will Levis being involved uh, in game action moving forward. 
Can you give us kind of the, from a defender's perspective, what he brings to the quarterback position? How is that maybe different than Sean Clifford? And, and ultimately, what do you see on the practice field from Will Levis? From Will, he'll he'll definitely tuck the ball quicker and he'll run and use his, use his legs. He'll, he'll definitely use his legs quicker than um, Sean Will. And Sean, he will take his time and diagnose the defense and make the best decision possible as far as throwing the ball. And Will does the same thing as well, but when he knows that he has to go, he'll he'll be quicker to go than a, uh, Sean Will. That's that's really the only difference between them. And Sean, he'll definitely tuck the ball and, and run as well. So they're basically the same besides just the timing as far as when they make their decisions. Joe Giuliano. Uh, Brandon, uh, Penn State's averaging uh, 36 points allowed per game, and I know it's not all on you guys. You had a, they had a scoop and score last week, and you've had some short fields to defend. Uh, how, do you, how do you get that number down uh, d defensively? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? It went um, out a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, Penn State's allowed 36 points a game through their first three games, and I know it's not all on you. You've, they had a scoop and score last week and uh, some short fields in, in, the, in the Indiana game. I just wonder what you guys have to do better to get that number down. As far as the scoring number, it's on the off well, all three phases of the game: offense, defense, and special teams. The offense, they if they do have like an unfortunate situation to turn the ball over, where is the ball at on the field? Like where, like is it where we where the defense has the back against the wall, or is it? further down the field to where, okay, we're somewhat comfortable with the situation that we're handling, as well as the special teams. How's, how's punt? How's punt return? How's kickoff, kickoff return? That type of thing. So really, it's not on one specific group. It's on all of us. Okay, I'll ask it this way then. Uh, do you feel like the defense has been playing up to its capabilities? And if not, what do you have to do to make it better? We're living up to what we set out to do. There's some minor tweaks that we have to change as a defense, and we understand those tweaks, and we know what we have to do from from our standpoint. And all this now is just to go out and execute it. Thank you, Gianna Galley. Yes. Hi, Brandon. Hope you're doing well. Um, walking off the field on Saturday, you know the emotions were raw going from then to now, how has that regrouping of emotions and mindset taken place? Is there a certain teammate or maybe group of teammates that stick out as, as stepping up and bringing that team back to a point of positivity? Really, everybody throughout the whole situation was being as positive as they can, even though we lost, as we all know. Um, just we're just eager to um, go into the next game in Nebraska. That's that's all it is. We're just ready to just get a second chance and bounce back from our mishaps. Mark Brennan. Brandon, where do you feel you made strides through the first three games? And, and what are some areas where you still think you have to maybe get a little bit better or maybe just more refined is a better way of putting it? I would say um, just talking with uh, Coach Pry and understanding my, not really my role, but what all I have to do for my team is really just been what I've been focusing on. And as far as me personally, I know the little things that I may need to fix. I know my, how should I say, quote unquote weaknesses are, but I'm just uh, working to get better each day and to give, all, give the team all I have. New bias, Wellborn. Yes. Um, first of all, thanks again, Brandon. Um, what has it been particularly with you guys struggling with the mobile quarterbacks with Penix Jr. and Fields and then Tiger Lyle last week? What, what's it been with the mobile guys? Hold on. Did, can I hear the first part of that? Oh, I'm sorry. Like, um, what, what's been the struggle with the mobile quarterbacks for you guys, at least over the first three weeks? And how do you correct it facing another guy who's mobile? Really, we it's not really technically a struggle that we have, but we do know that there are some things that we need to fix as far as our discipline on the field. So maybe like 
defense line will pop over a gap or us as linebackers won't fit in a right gap a certain way to where like it'll help the defensive backs make a play. It's all it's all a uh, all effort. It's it's everybody. It's not just one particular um person. So we all all eleven of us have to move as one and we haven't been doing that and that's what we're working on and that's what we're gonna um do better. Tyler Donahue. Brandon, um, if I could pick your brain on, on another quarterback here, uh, not related to the defense, but he is related to the defense because you see him day in, day out to get you ready. Michael Bowens, um, important role as a scout team, developmental quarterback. What's he looked like through his first few months on campus? How does he challenge you guys? How does he prepare you for these matchups? And I guess what's your overall kind of scouting report on, on him so far in the program? For him, he's – Real, real quiet, doesn't really say anything much. He doesn't really talk much, but he's always been in the meetings at least on 10, 15 minutes early and making sure that he's, um, he gets a full, full, uh, I can't talk. He makes sure that he gets the uh, full effect of every meeting and know what he has to do. Um, as far as on the field, uh, he makes great reasons as far as pulling the ball or whether or not to hand it off on um, throwing the ball and he he can run. He has great feet. He can run. Part of the project. Yeah, Brandon, I'm not sure if you've answered this already or not, um, either, you know, post game Saturday or whenever, but, you know, after the loss on Saturday, Jahan Dotson said that uh, certain guys in the locker room, he felt were distracted. Um, what do you think he meant by that? What are those distractions? He didn't mean certain guys as far as just pointing the blame at one particular person. Everybody has their own personal distractions, whether or not it's something that happened on the field or off the field or any extracurricular activities we're in. It just means that we were obviously not in the right mindset that we've been in and that we need to fix it. And we know that we need to fix it as a group. And that's that's what we're going to do. Okay, any other questions for Brandon? All right, thanks everyone. Thanks Brandon for your time. No problem.